Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, you've listened to my topic, and uh, I added promoting learning um, as I create excitement, I also promote learning through the active learning strategies. So the, um, that's part of the uh, uh, trying to create excitement. I'm sure you have some papers with you. And I'm sure, I, I think we are not too full to be active this afternoon. Mm -hmm. I know we just had our lunch but we're still going to be very active. So that paper is going to be very useful very soon as active listeners. We are going to be very active. So this afternoon, my aims um, are to share how I have been creating excitement and promoting learning in my two courses, um, PSYC 2009, Learning Theory and Practice, and PSYC 2022 uh, Developmental Psychology. The two classes are quite large. I have 184 in 2009 and 97 in 2022. And um, this presentation will also address active learning components. We're going to see what we mean by that. And then importance and also and I'm going to discuss how I've been incorporating the active learning strategies into the classroom you know, activities. And then feedback from the students, then my action research on the um, strategies. So let's go on. So active learning is anything that students do, apart from just listening passively or putting their hands under their chin like Mrs. Pa Ms. Pa Mrs. Atley is doing now, just looking. Well, <laughs> okay, there can be active listening too. You can see that student in the slide. If a student sits like that for um, two hours, I can sleep off, you know, just looking and, you know, gazing like that or, you know. So um, for active learning, it um, involves you know, it ranges from short reading and writing exercises, which may be reaction to, you know, course materials. You know, maybe the students will be given, they can read from the slides as you can see in the picture, or they can hold a reading material and, uh, you know, read as you can, as you see in that um, picture. So we have other activities like engaging in various activities. This um, activity took place in the learning theory and practice class. Um, that day we discussed the different learning styles and um, we discussed Woodridge's um, learning styles, the kinesthetic, auditory, and then visual. And I said, well, it's time to practice this, these three learning styles. And then I, excuse me, showed them this video, which we are also going to look at, and then uh, make use of the paper that we are having right in our hand. And then we're going to be active learners. It didn't finish downloading, why? Let's see what happens. Oh my God, it's gone back. I hope it's going to come up, yes. So hey let's guys, hold. Um, I'm going to teach you how to make a paper house. And what we need is either pen, pencil, or marker, whichever one um, you prefer, and a piece of paper. And what we're going to do is um, hold the paper, paper like this. And you can start from either the left or the right side. So you're going to fold your paper like this. So when you open it, you'll have a line right there, like this, pretty similar to this one. You're going to do the same thing to the other side of the paper. And we're going to fold. So we're going to open it. And we're going to have a big X. And what we want to do is um, push the middle parts, the middle, middle parts, which uh, would be this two, mm -hmm. to the inside of the paper. And we're going to hold the top 
like this and we're gonna hold the back of the paper too and um so we're gonna push it and try to make an um a triangle like that so fold it and make sure it looks pretty neat and um you're gonna have a big triangle and you're gonna have some extra paper at the bottom. And what we're gonna do with that extra paper is you're gonna hold the top like this. So we are doing and fold either start it start either from the left or the right, whichever one you uh, prepare. <laughs> so you're gonna fold fold it like this. It doesn't have to be perfect, obviously. And you do the same thing on the <laughs> other side. And there we have a paper house. And what we could do is get our marker or pencil or pen, whatever um, you want to use, and draw a window. Door. And you can also draw a door. And there we go. There's our paper house. Thank you. Um, <laughs> so how many of us were able to make the paper house? Actually, because of time, um, we're supposed to look at it first and then we then go into the activity. That's, that's what we did in the class. The students looked at her first and they you know, paid attention to what she did. And then they eventually did that. And that's the picture that you've seen. And they showed me, look, 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 this is paper house. And that made them to be very active, you know. We did learning styles on that day, and it was very interesting. My lecture hours are usually in, um, from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m., so I always try to make the students, you know, keep, to keep them awake, you know. The uh, range of activities that we also have in the active learning um, is the higher order thinking tasks as creativity, analysis, synthesis, and evaluation. We're going to see how two groups of students, you know, address um, the same question, uh, like what processes are involved in Bandura's observational learning? Create a learning situation and provide a concept which you want to teach, utilizing the components of observational learning in a classroom or an organizational setting. Now let's go. We're going to see the creativity, the uh, thinking skills, and all that the students also put into, the, um, into their presentation.
again. You're going to talk to us about retention. Retention is the second step in the third observational learning Retention is remembering the behavior that has been observed. In this instance, a light model is going to show us and demonstrate to us the concept of that. And we're going to remember the dance set that the instructor will demonstrate to us. And by using our retentional processes, we will store the dance moves imagery and we will then impact them physically. And in the retention process, the short term memory is going to be delayed. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to invite our Uncle Bob. We ask Uncle Bob to come. I want y'all guys to come up with me. Uh, Uncle Bob is going to come and he is going to teach us some moves from the Barbados landscape. Are y'all ready? Of course, I'm ready. <laughs> good evening, good evening. How y'all doing this evening? All right, this evening we're going to try to demonstrate some few moves for y'all. All right, the first thing we're going to do, we're going to join in, so we can teach us to join in. Right? Okay, don't be right, so now we're going to do a little hand, one hand out. One foot up, one hand in the camera. So we can start. Right hand up, then right foot up. And we can tap for four. And we can go behind the camera. Right hand up. So we can tap. So we can tap. <laughs> right. So up. Up for four. One, two, three, four. Right hand up. Right foot up. Right hand up. Right foot up. Right foot up. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And now we can switch. We can switch. Then we got the hand, left hand up, and the left foot up. And then we got the right hand in the camera. We can try this again. So we can go. One, two, to um, demonstrate the processes, the concepts that we have in observational learning, attention, retention, motivation, reproduction. And this is just by um, one of the, a group in the, in the class. So um, we're going to see how another group, you know, approach the same question. Uh, which we have in this video too. The same question.
and the child is there watching, paying attention to what the father did to the mother. Let's see what happens in the classroom. This is um, what the son saw the father did at home, and he paid attention to it. He demonstrated, he demonstrated it, and because the father is a model, is uh, the f he, he has the qualities um, that uh, you know he feels that uh, is the father. So he easily imitated what he did. And he did this in this in the class. So um, this is just telling us that through active learning, the students can approach their questions in uh, you know different ways, and they they will still be answering the question. And it's just a um, uh, good thing to involve them in all these activities. So we move on to the. Uh, the next thing in the in the presentation, and that is the um, we we've just discussed the group activities and all that. So complex group activities that we just saw, and then we the need for active learning. Amount of information retained by students declines. You know, after 10 minutes, as found by the researchers. There is also need for active learning because there is, you know, uh, differences favoring discussion methods over lecture method. And then students are more involved in learning. It caters for different learning styles. You know, you are able to just as we had the exercise, is, and there is less emphasis emphasis on information transmission and greater emphasis on developing student skills. There is greater emphasis on exploration of attitudes and values. Students' motivation is increased. They come to class more when they are actively engaged, when you let them know that they are important. And even you let them know that without them, you, the, the lecture will not be interesting, that they have to be in the class. So you see them coming to the class, and this really worked for me. Students receive immediate feedback. After their presentations, in the tutorials, even in the class, we're still going to see another one in the class, they receive immediate feedback, you know? They are told what they have done, whether they've addressed the question or not, and they are involved in higher order thinking skills. 
and um, the active learning strategies now, they are instructional activities involved, uh, you know, involving students in doing things and thinking about what they are doing. And uh, some of them had been identified by researchers and I incorporated them into my um, class activities, like the role play. Students acted a part or some parts. They had better ideas of the concepts and theories being discussed. And uh, as we are going to see in uh, these um, two skits that were presented by the, uh, by the students. Let's see the skit. This was during the lecture. one of the, we were, on that day, we discussed the um, different parental styles, the authoritative, authoritarian, the permissive and uninvolved, and I now, during the lecture, called on them to come and, you know, role play, just to be sure that they have the same thing that I also have in mind. They were not informed before, and they actually put all this on. They role played the different parental styles, but we don't have time to look at all, so we have to quickly go back to the presentation now. <clears throat> Let's see how, so role play is j one of them, and then um, we also have the game show. Many will discuss the idea that one would literally, um, you know, play games in the university setting, but it's a very, very good method. So we had games during the course, and the students actually, you know, uh, participated, and they were very, very happy, uh, you know, uh, the, it, and it really refreshed them. We had it during the um, tutorial session also, when we were about to round up, and some of the topics that we did not really discuss um, were uh, that we did not have time to discuss during the the class management learning styles and all that we 
had all that during the tutorial session, and the students were very active during that time, um, during the uh, game show, as we will see in um, game seven, let's see. So the... So that is the one of the sessions when we had it. So you love money. So let's go on. We will not be able to go on go through all of them. I I hope in future we will be given an hour for presentation. <laughs> Then the fact that we cannot really, uh, you know, we have to be going out of the so that's game show, and it's really very, it was uh, very effective during the lectures, and um, videos were also shown to illustrate some theories or abstract concepts like the various stages of, uh, you know, in the theory like Piaget's cognitive development theory which we are just going to, I don't know whether we can still look at some of things, please. <laughs> um, you see the different stages, like uh, the sensory motor stage, and um, New babies aren't quite sure what happens to objects when they leave their sight. Sky's mom keeps disappearing and reappearing. No wonder Peekaboo is so much fun. During their first year, however, infants will learn an important concept, object permanence. Everything has a life of its own, even if it is out of sight. At Maya's age, babies know to look for the object, but they might not have everything else straight. Ten months. So when we when you talk about object permanence and they um, see this in the exam, I think they will remember the video, and they will be able to you know answer the questions. You know, they transfer the the concept is formed you know in their mind because, it, and it helps also in a situation where there is no laboratory to really you know, practice these experiments. When they see the videos, they can always uh, you know, concretize the ideas or the concepts that uh, you know, were being discussed in the, um, during the lecture. So let's go back to us. So that's how far we can go with the video. We can, we should, let's go on to the next strat uh, strategy, which is um, the discussions. During the class, during the lectures, I always engage them in discussions, very useful in testing students' comprehension of the topic being discussed, you know, during uh, the, the, the always love this also they like to discuss the i post questions to them and uh this is a panel discussion by the by the group you know during their presentation in the tutorials we may not be able to look at that we also use the group work you know group work and the discussion also go together the many of them did not like the group activities because they feel that some of the group members come to steal marks and then go away. During the presentation, they come, they present, they have their marks and then they fly off. So they, some people you know, prefer to work on their own, but I said we should, they should develop the team spirit. And I also tried to assess them I, I use the formative assessment and also as well as summative. I, you know, gave them some grades even uh, when they presented the mock, you know, presentation. 
one minute paper is another one which is highly effective in you know checking students progress and knowing whether they understand what you are doing in the class just to see whether they also they have the same thing in mind you know as you are discussing so this is a sample of the one minute paper and uh, you know the and we can ask for the clearest point or the modest point, the point that is not clear at all, you know, after the lecture. And then if they now tell you this, and in fact, after the semester, I asked them, I said, uh, which topics do you find difficult out of the topics that we have discussed? Which ones do you like? Which, which ones do you feel that they are not really okay? And they actually, you know, responded. So um, we're moving from the um, strategies to the feedback, you know, feedback on these strategies. I gave them active learning assessment form to feel to know whether the active learning strategies have been enhancing their learning. And um, students responded. And um, the, we, we had, you know, the students preferring most the videos. I'm sure people love to watch videos, you know. So they love videos. About 99% of them agreed that it promotes their learning. And uh, this is uh, followed by uh, discussion strategy or method. And then we have the, um, the one, two, three, four, five. And that is one, two, three, four, five the game and the clarification process, you know, coming next. So we can see that from the results that all the active learning strategies are very effective, but we can guess why they don't like the five minute paper, which is, you know, 83% of them actually agreed and it's not up to 90 something because anything that looks like tests Students don't like it. So even when you tell them, this is not going to be, this is not a test. It's just to know whether you've, you really understood what we did. They try to, you know, uh, you know frown at it. So, but uh, all the same, we still used it, and it was very effective. Because they know that I'm going to ask them those questions. So they paid attention in the class. Majority of the students agree that all the active learning strategies, just what we have said there, and then both formative and summative, including online activities, you know, were incorporated into the course content. So for their presentation um, in the tutorials, they had 18 marks for the paper presentation, uh, for the paper that they submitted. On that presentation, it was also 18 marks they had a mock presentation before the actual presentation for grading, and I gave them two marks there. And then the game show that I showed you a few minutes ago was also for two marks. And then there was the class activities, usually when we had a one minute paper and the other things in the class, when they discussed, when they role played, those people who participated, they had their one one marks and then those who were also in the class for the various class activities, they also had the marks, so I gave them two. That two is extra, and I told them that it's very, very valuable because they cannot get it in the super center to buy. And then the total coursework is 40 marks, the exam is 60, and then we have 100. So majority of the students had good results. And then the barriers, of course, Time consuming both in preparation and practice. You know, it's very time consuming. Large class uh, sizes may also be a barrier, but when the, there is will, there will always be a way. So if we are interested in doing it, we would do it. Most instru instructors think of themselves as custodian of knowledge, as somebody that has everything so they don't need to do all this. There may be lack of materials or equipment, students' resistance also. Some of them prefer to just sit down and be looking instead of being active. So this is another barrier. But they are not 
are you know, unsolvable. They are not insurmountable. So we can always you know, uh, uh, overcome this when we are determined to do. So there are compliments and commendations from the students through emails, phone calls, text messages, and also lectures ended happily. Um, let's see one of these as we round up. Let's just see the, um, the, G, G9. Come, come, come and do it. Right, it mm. just take pictures. over. <laughs> <laughs> Adrian, 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 Gandy, short Adrian. Gain the shot, gain the shot, gain the shot, gain the shot. Hello? Just um, um, one of the feedbacks that I got, and uh, <laughs> just to uh, as an evidence that um, the students also appreciated the effort, and it was not um, uh, in vain. So um, let's quickly conclude now. And also, there is this. Um, so that's an email from one of my students also. Now that the climax, I don't need to read it. That's all. So um, I had so many, but we cannot just, we can't read them all. So in conclusion, um, so that's about feedback. And uh, in conclusion, active learning is a shift from the rigid traditional method focused on the uh, lecturer, you know, 
the deliverer of knowledge, as the deliverer of knowledge to the new learner center method focused on the learner as information seeker. So we should shift our attention to the learner. One must learn by doing the thing, for though you think you know it, you have no certainty until you try. So for code. tell me and I forget, teach me and I may remember. Involve me and I learn by Franklin. As we reflect on this, how can you use the active learning strategies to modify and improve your current teaching practices? Thanks for listening actively too. Thank you very much.